Hello, it's John from Revit for Interior Designers. And today we're gonna to do a quick tip on creating wall types in Revit, which actually uh, should be pretty quick and easy. Uh, I have a set of floor plans in front of me here. And let's say we're working on a project and we wanna recreate kind of existing conditions on a, on a given project that's been built and we had construction documents. So if you look at this floor plan, if I were to zoom into it here, um, along the exterior of the building, they have these things called callouts. This bubble here shows us what this corner looks like in greater detail. One on A51, for example. This bubble here calls out a detail on seven on A51. It seems like the sheet called A51 has a lot of details along the exterior of the building, and perhaps that can help us build this exterior wall. So if I if I navigate to this A51 sheet here, let's take a look at this corner condition here, number seven. And so without having any knowledge of actual material thicknesses and, and properties, this drawing has a ton of information that we can use to build this in Revit. As an example, what do we know here? We know that there's a string of dimensions across here. This wall is 18 inches. This wall here is 24 inches by measuring the CAD file that we're using to trace this project. That's 24 inches. And this wall here is 20 inches. That's a one foot eight and five eighths. But let's, let's slim it down and make it one foot eight exactly as an example. So if we start here, there's a layer of brick. There's an airspace here. That's, that's an open airspace. And here there's a piece of rigid insulation. Some of, some of this information can be found by, by tracking down these notes here that describe what's happening. This CMU or concrete masonry unit here is seven and five eighths. And then this gap here between that, that masonry unit and that piece of drip board is two and an eighth. And we know that a piece of drip board here is five eighths. <clears throat> so to, to reach two and an eighth, this gap here must be one and five eighths because together it's two and an eighth. So that stud right there, is one and five eighths. This condition here, where it turns the corner, is exactly the same. You got the the brick stayed the same, insulation stayed the same. Whatever that becomes, whatever thickness that becomes, we know that the air and insulation is a total of four and five eighths in this example. This is a a, a block, same same dimension, and then the, yet here the stud got bigger. Now they don't necessarily call out the stud size in these notes here. I don't see anything regarding the stud. Now they do have a note here, three inch cavity insulation. That's good because if that's three inches, then what's left over is one and five eighths to get to four and five eighths. So we have that answered right there. That says three inch insulation. So that's another part of the puzzle. Here, if we don't know how big the stud is, or you're not familiar with stud sizes, here's a clue, six inch roof drain. That drain inside this cavity here is six inches. So perhaps the studs are six inches. And a quick Google of metal stud sizes will show you all the different sizes that there are, exist. And six inches is one of the sizes that are common. Turn the corner here, again, 20 inch wall. Here it said that this CMU is 10 inches. So it's no longer seven and five eighths, it's 10 inches. We know that this stud here, which is the same as that stud there, is one and five eighths. Jet board is five eighths. That insulation is three inches. That brick is uh, three and five eighths, which means whatever's left over belongs to air. Because at the end of the day, you're buying these products at the, at the hardware store. These come in certain set sizes. If you don't know the sizes, you can simply Google it and it'll give you the average sizes for these, for these units. But this drawing is, gives you a wealth of information, all of which you can use to build this wall, recreate it in Revit. And it turns out to be a lot easier than, than you can imagine. So with that in mind, with this drawing kind of in our back pocket, let's go to Revit. Here's a little simplistic layout of the wall. This is the exterior wall here that is 18 inches. I've already duplicated this generic wall, made it 18 inches by going to edit type, duplicate, and simply go into structure and simply type the number there. 18 inches, fine. Well, that's generic. We don't know when we started a project what the materials are, are gonna be used. 
So we start with generic as, as, a, as a basis. <clears throat> but at some point, we can gain information on the project. We know now that, for example, the exterior wall is going to be brick. We know that this wall is 18 inches, this wall is 24 inches, and this wall is 20 inches, each of which has their own generic wall type here. But if you look at that in 3D, let's say now that we know that information, we want to make these walls uh, similar to what was actually built. So we need to create wall types that are more accurate. So we know the information from the drawings. So if I were to look at my walls, which wall type in this list of prefab wall types is most similar to our project? Well, it's brick on CMU. Brick on concrete mason units. So if I click on that, maybe I can start with this. And it'll give me uh, the advantage of copying something that already exists. So if I'll tell, I, I take this and I go edit type. And the first thing I want to do is duplicate it and call it John's. I always initial it with my, my name. And let's say I want to do the one that's uh, 18 inches. So I'll call it CMU 18. Currently, this is one foot seven and a half. So it's pretty close. So we'll go to structure. What do we have here? Well, if we remove things that did not show up in the drawing, which is membrane, a membrane here, let's delete it altogether. Let's hit delete. So what do we got left? We got brick, we got air, we got insulation, concrete masonry units, seven and five eighths, metal, oh, excuse me, metal furring, one and five eighths. This is pretty much the composition of the wall that we looked at. The drawing had all these listed out and gave us these measurements. And the only thing that wasn't called out was air. And so what do we need to do the air to make this one foot six? Well, we would probably subtract an inch and a half. And suddenly one foot six it is by simply taking it out of the air. Because the rest of these units, these materials were called out on the drawings. And if you need to add more, you simply insert and move them up and down the list, up and down. And whatever at the top of the list here is, is the exterior side. Or at the bottom of the list is the interior side. The exterior side on the walls in Revit have a little arrow that points up and down. It favors the exterior side. So the exterior side of this wall is brick. We've got a one foot six wall. We're done. I've just made that wall there. But we have two more because one's 24 and one's 20. Duplicate this. Call this 24. What change occurred in the 24? Well, if you go back to the drawing, we realize that this, uh, this stud became six inches. Okay, fine. Go back here. That stud here became six inches. So what did I do? Now we have a one foot 10 and three eighths inch wall. And this needs to be 24 inches. So for example, if I made the air three inches, how close am I? I'm one foot 11 and seven eighths. So another eighth of an inch gets us to two feet. So where do we put it? We put it in the, in the logical location. Air. Air is free. It doesn't come sold in hardware stores. So if we simply add an eighth of an inch here, we've built a, one, a two foot wall. That's great. The rest of the information stays the same. No more work to be done here. Hit OK. You've now made a wall called Brick on CMU 24. Duplicate it again for the last wall, 20. And then go back here and figure out what changed. And again, if go back to our reference drawing, this piece of concrete block became 10 inches. That metal stud became one and five eighths. So let's make those changes. This one, now concrete mock block is not exactly 10 inches, but for the sake of argument, let's assume it is as an example. Uh, this became a one and five eighths. And how close are we to 20 inches? Uh, one foot 10. I need two more inches. Let's make sure I got everything correct here. One foot eight. This is a 20, 20 inch wall. So 20 inch wall. I need, I need to shave off two inches. Because one foot eight is 20 inches. So if I take it out of air, as an example, one foot eight, that's 20 inches. Again, unfortunately, it gets taken out of the airspace. Uh, but again, everything else is called out in the drawings. 
uh, concrete masonry units is uh, is 10 inches. And if you do a quick a quick Google of of different sizes of uh, concrete masonry units, you'll see that it is, in fact, here you can see it here. Quick Google information at our fingertips here. Um, there are six more rows here. So if you have a, a 10 inch concrete masonry unit here, 10 inches. Now they call this nominal dimensions, basically a shorthand, uh, not actual dimensions, but, um, an abbreviated dimension, uh, a 10 by eight by 16, but it's not actually 10 inches. It's actually nine and five eighths. These are real dimensions, actual dimensions. These are nominal, which are basically shorthand so that you don't have to include all the fractions and keep it, keep it simple. But if you want to enter that number, you can. A simple Google will show you exactly how big these units are. So this is, for example, nine, if you want to be completely accurate, nine and five eighths. Remember, whenever you see the word nominal, it means it's a shortcut, it's shorthand. And so to get to one foot eight, I need another three eighths of an inch. So I can add it here. So the airspace becomes one and a half. One foot eight, 20 inches. Get okay, get okay. Now in your library here of, of wall types, uh, you can then do a search for my initials. Um, well, in this version of Revit, I can't, but uh, in, in 2024, 2023, you can, you can do a quick search. Uh, actually, you have to launch, you have to open up the menu first and do it here. Search. I can type JM. Show me my walls. And here they are. John's 18, 20, and 24 inch brick on CMU wall. So now you're, you're in great shape. You can now select this wall here. I hover this wall, hit tab, and sometimes it grabs them all if they're all similar. Then you can click. Uh, that assumes all the walls are exactly the same. Another quick way of Click on that one wall that's 18 inches. Right click, this is the best way. Select all instances, which are copies, in the project. And assume these are all the same. These walls here will used to be JM generic 18. They're going to become John's brick on CMU, 18 inches. Same size wall, but different materials are now added to that wall type. And you can see here, if you display here the fine level of detail, you can begin to see the materials show up. If you want to see that in color, simply use shaded view. You can see the material showing up. If I click on the wall, the arrow shows me what side of the wall, top or bottom, is the exterior. The arrow belongs on the exterior side, always. So that tells me the exterior of the wall is going to be brick. Click on this wall. Brick is going to be on the outside. Click on this wall. Brick is going to be on the outside. That's great. This wall. Brick on the outside there. Click on this wall. Brick here, facing the outside. So simply choosing the wall, right clicking, selecting all the copies of it, assuming they're all going to be exactly the same. In this example, this is 24. Well, let's make this John's 24 inch CMU. That's been changed. Click here. That's John's 20. Let's make it John's CMU 20. Here. Now, when we look at the exterior of the building, you can see here all the materials are assigned correctly. If you click on this wall, then I use shift mouse wheel. I can rotate to the inside. That's drywall. Click outside. That's brick. And in plan view, you can now see the materials appearing here layer by layer in the same fashion, in the same order that they appeared in the wall types. The only thing that changed was the airspace. Airspace got narrower and, and, and wider depending on the condition of the wall. What type of wall were you doing? Now, obviously it helps to have a set of drawings, but it's quicker to take a wall from the wall type here and find that one that's most similar to what you're trying to develop and use it. If I was doing a brick on metal stud, I'd use this one here. Different conditions, edit type, Structure, different conditions. Do you need all these layers? Do you have a reference, a set of drawings that shows you what this wall should look like? 
You simply delete what you don't need, keep what you do need, and make the adjustment. Usually, air is sacrificed because it's not bought and sold in stores. And if you don't know the thickness of certain items, Google it. Very simple. And so anyway, that's a quick tour of how to create wall types in Revit, replace a generic model with actual legit wall types, ideally using a set of construction documents here, which can be found on the internet, that'll give you different dimensions of different materials. So these go hand in hand. Okay, good luck with your projects, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.